Joseph, you had a tweet last night that was uh, very interesting in terms of the new rules and what the effects of the new rules, because I feel like that's that's what a lot of fans are kind of looking for is like, all right, yeah, you introduce all these new rules. Or what are the, what are they actually doing? What does it mean? Um, if you could run through those numbers for us, please. Yeah. Runs. This is the first 32 days of the season compared to last year. Runs are up 14%. Hits are up 9%. Average is up 15 points. Steals are up 54%. And games are 27 minutes shorter. Every bit of that screams, screams action. Every bit of that. Every single bit of that. More runs, more base runners, more base stealing, all happening in a shorter amount of time. That is quite literally the definition of action packed. Is it not? That's what we wanted. (laughs) That's what we wanted. That's uh, so. Do you as a baseball fan, anyone can answer this. Do you as a baseball fan, because the games are 27 minutes shorter, feel like you're being robbed of any baseball? No. No. (laughs) And and, and I I, I answer that. I answer that. uh, I I, I don't want to I don't want to say this condescendingly because there is a difference between the way I watch baseball and somebody in a in a bar who watches 12 games a year watches baseball all right so base level what you thought the game was what the game is now i i i can't imagine what you think you're missing i can't imagine what you think i'll tell you what dallas is not happening i used to have time to go in there nobody cares get it. Nobody Pizza. gives a shit nobody cares some chicken fingers Pizza. then i would and, get ice cream and then for every slow year, processor like you, there's a rapid slow processor out there going, I want shit fucking right now, right now. Like, get, I'm not talking about the right game. Now. I'm talking about if you go to the game, you don't feel like you're there very long, but I'm not complaining. Like the average fan is not going to as many games as I'm going to. So their experience is, yeah, I can sit down, I can watch my baseball team and I don't have to make the choice of, do I watch the game or do I watch a movie? Do I read a couple of chapters in my book? Now you can do both. What do you mean now you can do both? I remember one time um, I went to a game at Jacobs Field with my grandparents and my family and uh, we had dinner reservations and my grandfather was so insistent on making the reservation on time that we left the game early and then Cleveland hit a walk-off home run and I heard the crowd scream from the parking lot that I missed. And you know what? If those rules had been in place, back then, then I wouldn't have missed it and we would have made our dinner reservation. I think it's great. I mean, tough to argue that. Tough to tough. argue with it. I think it's great because if you make a post like this, like you'll get a bunch of people saying what Jared just said, ironically, like they want to get pizza between innings and it's fucking ruining the vibe <laughs> in the stadium. Mm-hmm. But it's got to be like 95% approval rate if you polled every single person who goes to a major league game. Like if you and go, I still approve. I yeah. still approve. The experience yeah. is 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 what has changed, and it's clearly because of the timing, and that's that's what people aren't used to. People who've like heard what a baseball game is supposed to be like when they show up for the first time in house, they're in awe, right? They're like, oh wow, they're looking at everything going on, and then when the game starts, let's say the inning is started, and you get up and you're gonna walk to the concession stand with this person who's going to a baseball game for the very first time. I'd be curious as to see where their attention is. Is their attention every 15 seconds turning to the field or trying to find a TV for the pitch? Or is their attention completely focused elsewhere? Like just checking out the stands and getting something to eat, getting a drink or whatever. Because the idea is the younger folks that you're trying to attract. This is how they move. This is how they operate. They're more than okay with grabbing a bite to eat, catching a pitch, missing an at bat, getting back to the seat because this is how they operate. This is how they process. Well, we're, we're finding an intersection between those young people who want to move quickly 
and the young people who also like baseball, who are okay with hitting the brakes at, at certain times. If two hours and 45 minutes is not enough time for you inside of the stadium, I have a great solution. Show, Show up early. for BP. Yeah. There you go. Take, take in some action when it's, you know, kind of that tranquil, you know, slow moving baseball environment that you love and I love sometimes too. Um, just go earlier. It's really that simple. Jay, it is, it is really that simple. And I can't tell you how many parents, I can't tell you how many parents have taken that very approach right there. Because they're like, look, we're trying to find the sweet spot between, you know, showing them what's going on during the game, before the game, stuff like that, getting an on-field experience. If that's an, an opportunity that we have, we want to do that. But we also, we don't have four and a half hours, maybe five hours sometimes to spend going to the ballpark, then watching the game and getting home. So now what they do is they carve out little sections of time where they're going to be doing these things. We'll get there early. We'll watch BP. And if we're going to do that, then we don't have to stay for the whole game. But now we can because the game's about two and a half hours long or so. So really, we're looking at about a three and a half hour trip for the family as opposed to five and a half plus. That makes a difference for parents. It makes a massive difference for parents. It's better mm. for everybody. Even the geezers, bro. Like they are not staying up past like 10, 30, 11. <laughs> like, like this is good for them, too. Everyone likes this shit except for like yeah. 5,000 people who comment on every time you post about the pitch clock. Other than those guys, I, I would just be really curious to hear what baseball do you think you're missing out on? If you as a if you are watching baseball right now and and thinking about the pitch clock and all of the things you are missing, you that is on you and you are doing mm -hmm. that proactively. If you just yes. <laughs> there, I cannot be convinced that people are tuning on baseball, watching it and being like, God damn, that fucking pitch clock screwing with my product. It's. <laughs> <laughs> you have to go in with an agenda to not like what you're viewing in order for that to be recognized. I never, yeah. ever think about it anymore. I never you think about never it anymore. And, there, no. and there's, there is no way, there is just no way that people are watching games today and then asking themselves, you know what? That was cool. But I wonder what would happen if this game was just stretched out like an hour longer. Yeah. I feel like yeah. I'm watching. Like you just like watched it. You just watch a two hour and 18 minute game. Okay. Feel, well, do you want to know what another hour of that looks like? That's what you're missing. That's what that's your argument is. I want like that why, to happen. Why? It's like watching a two and a half hour movie, but then being like, can you just include the 45 minutes of deleted scenes? Like I, I would it's can like, you just put all that shit in there that you took out that you don't actually need. It's like it's you like what, signing Jared? up for Hulu and being like, you know what? I prefer the version with all the commercials in between my shows. <laughs> <laughs> like this yeah this this tv show is moving too fast for me um yeah like it it it, it would feel so you know what would be great is if we actually if we did a throwback week and we we major league baseball rolled back all the rules like in the middle of this season or something like that and we're like here's no pitch clock baseball i would be like yo this shit sucks sucks, <laughs> sucks. sucks. I'd be, this is so <laughs> boring my my, I like to watch baseball casually a lot, like while I'm doing other stuff. Like that's why day baseball is the best. You throw it on in the background while you're working or whatever, and you catch whatever percentage of the game you catch. And my favorite type of games to view in that setting are basically Mark Burley performances, right? Where it's like, I get the ball, yeah. I'm throwing it, we're moving, we're moving, balls in play, ground ball, blah, blah, blah. And like nobody's ever Mark Burley, but more often than not, I'm feeling like I'm getting that type of viewing experience this year where we're just keeping it moving and I'm. I, I'm not looking over at the screen. It's like, holy fuck, nobody's thrown a pitch. What are we doing? You know, you know what that game looks like. And if you speak to anybody around baseball, Mark Burley is the gold standard for how we would like a game to go. It is often used to describe how well a guy or how fluidly a guy works. Was it Burley-esque? What do you got? Like, I'd love a Burley game. You know, like, you know what that game looks like. There Someone was says that. You can see the game play out. There was nobody in the world who was ever like, oh, yes, I get to watch Matsuzaka. Vicente Padilla. Yeah, I get to watch <laughs> Dice K do his thing on the mound today. It's like, no, it's like that's watching fucking paint yeah. dry. Um, I love Chris Bassett. I love Chris Bassett. You guys know this. Chris Bassett can be a human fucking rain delay. 
I love Bassey, but he is a slow, methodical worker. Love it to be picked up. Love. Congratulations to Major League Baseball and congratulations (laughs) to Rob Manfred. They did it. They did it. He said, "Even a do it." Blind squirrel finding a nut, et cetera, et cetera. He found multiple nuts. Go to the hall. Runs are up fourteen percent. Hits are up nine percent. Like that's one of the biggest things because I think. A lot of people were talking about the pitch clock, the pitch clock, the pitch clock in spring training. And rightfully so. Like it was the most, at the time, glaring difference. Now we don't notice it. But the biggest difference for me as a, as a night-to-night baseball consumer is banning the shift. How many fucking times have I sat there being like, well, that wasn't a hit last year. Almost every night I'm saying that shit. And I love, I mean... Like, I get it when when you're watching your favorite team, you're like, wow, like, congrats to our nerds. We we were positioned perfectly for that line <laughs> drive right up the middle. Like we had a guy right there and now it's an out and like that's another out closer to victory if we have a lead. But if you're a baseball fan just watching the game, obviously you want to see guys get hits like it's it is a breath of fresh air. Like, I feel like I was being strangled for years and finally they have they have let off the pressure on my throat so I can just breathe and enjoy baseball the way that you grew up watching where it's like, yeah, he hit the ball hard to the left side and it shot through. You have two guys. They both dole for it. They couldn't get to it because they were positioned where they were supposed to be positioned instead of just like having this fucking sheet where it's like, if you stand right here, like now, and that was a big thing too, like the athleticism. We're seeing shortstops go into the hole and be able to dive for balls into left field and then get up and make the throw to first base. That shit's exciting. Instead of just being fucking standing right where you're supposed to be, because that's what the data says, and you just scoop it up and you throw it over. Like I, I don't know. And there's I'm there's a big elements component of the shift being there's banned. elements to this game too that if you watch when you watch younger guys who are well adept to the pitch timer, and I mean as a pitcher as a hitter and a base runner, when you've got a group of young players all together on the field that have been under this umbrella of rules, the game looks a little different too, because now like last night I'm watching Bryce Miller, who's making his major league, major league debut. I'm watching him and estuary Ruiz basically fuck with each other on the mound and Ruiz at second base. Because they're utilizing the pitch timer. Bryce Miller's taking it all the way down. Then he comes set early and he's holding for nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. And there's like, there's just jockeying going on. So the cat and mouse game is uh, revived and is showing itself in different ways. I, this is a little inside baseball, um, but I, I do think it's interesting that these ideas, right? The idea that the game needed to inject some of this stuff is not new, right? We've been basically having this conversation either together or separately for, what, 10, 15 years. Um, I do think it's interesting that it, it seems to have taken Theo Epstein becoming part of the commissioner's inner circle for this to have broken through with the commissioner and his inner circle. And I just, I, I am interested down the line to get the after the fact kind of rundown of how these rules kind of the inside game of how they were implemented and the, and the role that Theo Epstein played, because it seems to me that we didn't really hear about this stuff, getting momentum in the minors and then up through the majors until Theo became involved um, and had the, the, and had the commission's ear basically. Um, So just kind of a a side. So it's, so it's almost like adding a newer and younger vibration and outlook (laughs) To a what could be considered old and archaic process has paid dividends. Yeah, yeah. And it, is that how? I'm, and people were telling that him that, that before Theo. It just took oh. somebody with Theo's kind of Pizzazz. reputation and you know kind of status in the game, I think, to get some momentum behind it. And ultimately, it's I'll a great push thing. back so. on that a little bit because Manfred has been the guy, number one pitch clock guy since he got in. Like he's wanted digital changes forever. Like he tried to speed this shit up way back when he started, like two thousand. What year was that when Big Poppy refused to do it? Like no one was stepping out of uh, boxes and shit. Fifteen. Oh yeah, they yeah. were fining guys for stepping out of the box. Yeah, and they, everyone Poppy just, was like, just, just see, fucking see, right. So <laughs> I'll and, just write a check. 
But but even even before that, even before that, there was an effort being made, though, Joey. There was an yeah. effort being made even before that. That's why I always go back to my experience in the minor leagues, punching out two guys on four pitches because the effort was being made then. And if you go deep into pace of play, like you go real deep, this shit goes back to like the 1800s. They were saying games were too long when they were like an hour and 10 minutes. I'm not I mean, bullshitting doesn't that, doesn't that lend itself to Theo's impact then? If we've been having this conversation for fucking 120 years and it, 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 this stuff really only happened in the five years since he's joined the commissioner's office. I, I agree that he probably had a lot to do with it, but I don't think he convinced Manfred of it. I okay. think they, other people were like, no, fuck Rob Manfred. We're not listening to this guy. Maybe. And then Theo said it. They're like, well, maybe it makes sense now. I think Manfred was yeah. always down to change the rules since day one. <laughs> Theo's, yeah. not, uh, Theo's not as punchable. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> but, like, the, the whole thing with like Rob Manfred is when he first came in, he did have a ton of ideas to change the game. And immediately the reaction was, this fucking guy hates baseball. Like, why is the commissioner of baseball a guy who hates the game? And then he makes some of the most drastic changes in the history of the sport to the game. And everyone's like, this is fucking awesome, man. Like, this is these are the changes that we've been waiting well, for. How why did fucking take so long? <laughs> what, what's what's that show where they swap? Like, I think it's called fucking wife swap, where like a, a mother slash wife will go and live with another family for like two weeks. Right. And she's taken all of her fucking chores, how she runs the house. She's taken that with her and implementing that in a new place. And so everybody that's that's in that house that she showed up to, they're like, hold on. What the fuck? What do you mean? Shoes off at the front door. I'm not doing the dishes. We have a dishwasher. My little sister will be the one loading that. I'm not doing fucking anything. Right. Yeah. So the pushback is going to be like, whoa, 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 what it, bedtime chores, vegetables. Get the fuck out of here. You're not making all these wholesale changes, lady. Are you crazy? And then if the other lady shows up, she's like, so I'm not big on the breakfast thing. Whatever you guys can find, fucking get after it uh, on the way home. If you could stop and get me a pizza, that'd be great. And ask your uncle if he could cigarettes and, and, and a bottle of whiskey, please, on the way home. Just I'll write a note if you have to. Those are completely different approaches, completely different approaches. I, I also think like to the idea that Manfred's had some ideas, some of which were good. I don't know that there is a person in modern sports history who would benefit more from not speaking publicly and just <laughs> doing things than Rob Manfred. Yeah. Like, yeah, these ideas were all on board, right? We love what's happened to the game. And every single time that man gets in front of a microphone publicly, he says something that enrages the baseball public. <laughs> or it's like so condescendingly like ridiculous that you're like, <laughs> Well, that, that's, Just, did he know that's he how was the, being recorded? Like, what has happened? Yeah, <laughs> that's how the next meeting, or that's how his next speech goes. He's like, yeah, "Well, you know, obviously, the numbers are in, and we knew that our fans were too stupid and slow and lazy <laughs> to <laughs> to consume the game as it was. So we had to do." He's like, "Oh, well, well, well by I, stupid and lazy, I just meant that they're not like us. You yeah, know, they're me, not as good as baseball fans as us." Let <laughs> me be very clear: I do not hate baseball. I hate you. I hate all of you. <laughs> <laughs> ah, good times. Uh, and don't worry, they're works. still playing for the piece of metal. I, I've, I've had a lot of there. really good losses in my career. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, hashtag New Orleans. <laughs> God. Um, <laughs> fucking piece of metal. I always forget about that. Uh, um, hashtag lack of fill. 